If you want to know how I used up all of these half used packages of stuff, baking meals and snacks and lunches and other things for my family this week, then stay tuned because this is a pantry slash use it up challenge video. see Mindy mom this is a type of video that is pretty popular on my channel it's where I take a look around my kitchen I check my pantry I check my fridge for items that are partially used open packages of items that need to be used up for produce that is at its peak and needs to be used soon and I just try to make meals make recipes make you know different things for my family to enjoy throughout the week using those items I also feel like this saves us a little money in the long haul because we are delaying going to the grocery store by a few days and spending more money on food and we're also making sure that we are making the best use of the food that we have, trying not to let any of it go to waste. If you like this kind of video, I hope that you will give it a thumbs up. And I also hope that you will hit that subscribe button if you are not subscribed already, because I do lots of pantry challenge videos across the year and I don't want you to miss one. I have had this apple cinnamon quick bread and muffin mix in my pantry for a couple months. I think I picked this up before Christmas at Aldi. And I'm going to make these up according to the package directions, but I'm going to jazz them up just a little bit. In this bowl, I have some streusel topping and it's just a quarter cup of brown sugar, a quarter cup of flour, two tablespoons of butter, and then a little bit of cinnamon that I just kind of stirred all together until it became a crummy mixture. <laughs> until it became a crumb mixture. And I will put a little bit of this on top of each of the muffins once I put the batter in the muffin cups. The other thing that I'm trying out is this muffin baking hack that I read about where you actually put them in at a higher temperature for a few minutes and then bump the temperature down for the remainder of the baking time. So I have them in here at 425 for four minutes and then I will open the oven up for a few seconds to let some of the heat out and I'll bump the temperature down to 350 for the rest of the baking time. And supposedly that burst of heat helps the muffins rise initially and makes them look, you know, more like bakery style muffins. We shall see. Look at how amazing those muffins look. I don't know if it was the cooking them, baking them at a higher temperature for the first few minutes or just the muffin mix itself, but those do not look like box muffin mixes. I mean, look how like high those, those domes on the muffins are. Those look like the muffins in the bakery case. These smell fantastic. I can't wait to try one. I made these in large part, not just because I'm doing a pantry challenge, but because we have swim meets and basketball games this weekend. And so my kids are going to love these as a snack. I wish you guys could smell this. <laughs> they smell so good, like apple cinnamon. Okay, those are fantastic. <laughs> so good. As my friend Lauren would say, 10 out of 10 would recommend. with the very end of a package of noodles like this or sometimes rice or some other kind of pasta or starch in my pantry like there's maybe one and a half servings or so of these little egg noodle dumplings in this bag I can usually whip up something for lunch for myself just a single serving lunch because I am almost always home at lunch or eat lunch from home so that's what we're going to do today and we're going to make sort of a copycat version of Kraft chicken egg noodle does anybody remember Kraft chicken egg noodle came in the brown box it's been discontinued for years but this is something that is very similar. So along with my noodles, I have a tablespoon of butter. And then in this little dish, I have a teaspoon of chicken broth base. You could use a bouillon cube or a teaspoon of chicken bouillon granules, and then two teaspoons of cornstarch. And this is going to help us kind of make the sauce for our noodles. I thought I would also toss in some of this chicken at the end because I've had this little package of chicken in my pantry for a while and it's not outdated, but needs to get used and it's just taken up space. So I thought I'd throw that in there as well. And I'll show you how I'm doing this and then what else I'm going to add to it to make a yummy lunch for myself. I have cooked my noodles and I've drained them and set them aside. And then here in my pan, I have my butter, which is melting. And I'm going to add my seasoning mix here, my chicken broth base and my cornstarch. And then also about a third of a cup of water. 
I'm just gonna stir that around a little bit over low heat. I want it to start to thicken just a little bit before I add the noodles back in the pot. See how that's starting to thicken up a little bit? I'm gonna go ahead and add my noodles back in here. The original Kraft chicken egg noodle had like little dried pieces of carrot and celery as well that sort of reconstituted whenever you started to make the sauce. You can actually find that occasionally in the seasoning aisle, little dried celery bits or dried carrot bits. You could add that here to the sauce as well. I just don't have any, so I'm just gonna leave it up. Here are my noodles. And full disclosure, you guys, I thought I would add this package of chicken, but when I opened it up, I just thought, you know what? I don't think this flavor is gonna mingle very well with this. So unfortunately, I'm probably gonna have to just throw this in the trash. I hate wasting food, but I tried a few bites of this and I just don't like it. So um, I'm not gonna eat that, but the noodles are delicious. And I just have a really simple side salad here using up you know, a few things from my refrigerator and my pantry. That's gonna be my lunch today. I've had these sweet Italian chicken sausages in my freezer for a while and I went ahead and defrosted them. They've been in the fridge for a few days now. So I thought I would use these to make a quick meal tonight. And I have about three quarters of this package of cheese and then also this pepper and onion blend that came out of the freezer that needs to get used. And I have the end of this bag of white rice. This is probably a little more than a cup of rice. So I'm thinking about actually putting these into my Instant Pot Aura on the rice setting because I haven't played around with any of the other settings besides the saute and the slow cook. So I thought this might be an interesting experiment to play around with this setting and see. And since these things are already cooked, I'm just reheating them along with the rice. I think that I can probably throw them in there at the same time as the rice. So I'll let you know how it turns out. I decided that I would go ahead and saute the onion and pepper mix for a few minutes. There was a little bit of olive oil in there as well. And then I diced up the chicken sausages and I let them saute with the onion and pepper blend for a couple minutes and now I'm gonna add my rice, just kind of stir that around and let it brown with the sausage and the vegetables for a minute while I switch the setting to rice. And the manual says, since I'm using a white rice, that I should put it on the low rice setting. And I'm also going to add about one and a half cups of water. I'll pop the lid on and let this cook until the Instant Pot Aura says that it is done. I don't know how long that's gonna take. I also discovered half a bag of fresh green beans in the veggie crisper that we need to use up. So I think I'm just going to snap the ends off of these and I'll blanch them and then probably saute them in a little bit of butter or olive oil, salt, pepper, and we'll have these along the side of the cheesy sausage rice thing <laughs> that I'm making up in the crock pot tonight. I think the dinner that I'm making tonight is gonna turn out really great, but it's not gonna stretch very far. I think it's really only gonna make about four servings. So I thought I would try to stretch the meal by adding some kind of bread alongside it. And I've had these lavash flatbreads in my freezer for a while. I took them out a couple days ago so that I would find a way to use them. And I also bought these Gouda slices for a different recipe for a different video. And I ended up changing the plan at the last minute so I didn't use them. And we've been using them for sandwiches and things. But what I thought I might do is pop them onto these lavash breads and then put them in the oven until the cheese melts and then pop another one on top and see if I can make almost like little toasted grilled cheese oven sandwiches. I don't know. We'll see how it comes out. every pantry cooking challenge. But every time I do this, I discover some kind of random recipe that I throw together that is really, really tasty. And this turned out so good. And so did the little oven flatbread grilled cheese. I know that you can't really see that very well, but there's Gouda cheese in there. This meal turned out so fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> even better than I had hoped for whenever I was trying to throw it together. So I'm very pleased with how this turned out and I used up several open packages of items that were hanging out in my kitchen. I was going 
going through my baking item bins in my pantry and I thought maybe I would try to use some things up that have been hanging out in there for a while. This peanut butter milk chocolate pudding. I think this is an instant pudding. And um, also these pie crusts have been in there for a while. And I did a video this past week. By the time you see this, I think it will have been up for a couple weeks about Valentine's treats. And I made this really easy mousse from pudding and Cool Whip. So I just add one and a quarter cups of milk to this instead of the full two cups that it calls for. And then I fold in the Cool Whip and it makes this really fluffy mousse. So I thought I could make that and then pour it into the crusts and then maybe top it with some of these Reese's candies since this is a peanut butter chocolate. And then we would have these um, to take to a Super Bowl party. Tonight, we are just having some good old fashioned spaghetti. I've got my ground beef here in the slow cooker. It's on um, saute function. This is my Instant Pot Aura slow cooker, so it has a saute function, so I'm browning the ground beef right in here. I'm gonna put the sauce on to simmer here in the crock pot because it's one of those nights when I'm running the mom shuttle all night and we need to eat in shifts because I have two swimmers and then a lacrosse player and they all have practices that are like back to back to back. So I thought that I would get this going and then a little later on I can cook the spaghetti noodles and everybody can eat whenever they're ready. And spaghetti, I mean, it's one of those things that's just, you know, it's, it's like the quintessential stereotypical family meal I know, but we eat a lot of those. I think sometimes whenever I make videos, it's easy to make it seem like we're eating like new stuff all the time, but we eat the basic family stuff too. You know, we have tacos, we have sandwiches, we even eat soup out of a can sometimes. That's just the life that we are living. And I pretty much almost always have on hand something I can use to make spaghetti. I had an open package of spaghetti noodles that I wanted to use up and I had some ground beef that I really wanted to use. And I always have tomato products in my pantry. So tonight I'm using a can of petite diced tomatoes, a can of tomato paste, plus a couple cans worth of water. And I'm actually gonna season it with just a spaghetti seasoning packet that I've had in my pantry for several months now that I'd like to go ahead and use. I usually will season it from scratch, but like I said, it's just super, super busy tonight. <laughs> And I'm going to take the easy route and we're going to just have spaghetti. Everybody likes it. There'll be some leftover for lunches or maybe another dinner later on in the week. So it is what it is. It's not exciting, but it's real life. If you like this video, don't forget to check out the description box for the playlist with previous pantry challenges and with my e-cookbook featuring recipes from previous pantry challenges. And if you want to know my thought process for how I put together these types of recipes, you can watch this video that I made last summer where I take you through my whole strategy.